it's not in fun, and we wanted to come by because we understand there's something new in Jabiru engines. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking to Pete Karate from North American Jabiru. And you're going to tell me some things about the new engine here. But before we do that, Pete, let's go back in time a little bit and talk about the numbers of these things, when they started, how many are flying, a few facts like that to lead us up to what is now the fourth generation. Sure. Jabiru's first engine uh, flew in 1994 uh, on one of their own airplanes as a 1600cc 60 horse engine. And uh, over the years, it's uh, uh, been expanded to, to uh, 2,200 cc's and 80 horse, and then in 1998, a 3,300 cc engine with 120 horse came on the scene. And Jabiru has always constantly improved these engines over the years. You know, the first engines, um, at about number 200, they made a significant change. Again, at uh, about number 700, they made another rather significant change that uh, uh, really helped solidify the engine. At uh, number 1,034, uh, another big change that took the engine from a 1,000-hour TBO engine to a 2,000-hour TBO engine. Uh, and then uh, from then on, things have continued to evolve from solid lifters to hydraulic lifters to uh, roller cam followers uh, and now to generation four. So there's about was one, uh, two, and three, those ones you just gave yeah. us. Now we're looking at generation four. Yeah, there's a, there have been about 7,000 Jabiru engines made and they're flying in about 40 countries around the world in uh, somewhere around 2,800 Jabiru airplanes and then a lot of experimental home built airplanes here in the USA. I think there's nearly half of the fleet is in the USA. Is that right? Yeah. I know a lot of home-built aircraft like the 120 horse engine. It's it's relatively small, fits in cowlings pretty well, it's relatively light. Yeah, it's interesting that uh, around the rest of the world the four-cylinder 2200 engine is by far the most popular. Uh, is that right? But in the USA, uh, we've sold uh, roughly 15 six-cylinders for every one four-cylinder. So in the USA, everybody wants a little more power. <laughs> yeah. Well, we like to go fast. We've got a big country here, and uh, people are just used to bigger engines, I guess. But So from all those days now, I'm guessing with through, through um, three generations previously, by the time mm -hmm. you get to the fourth, they must have things pretty well figured out on the engine. I think so. The last five years, everything has been very stable. Uh, the last change, major change they made was to roller cam followers and a new camshaft to match. That uh, really uh, made the valve train operation a lot smoother. Uh, the engines uh, will idle now at uh, almost 200 RPM lower than they would before. Oh, is that right? Because wow. the camshaft, the, That's quite a bit. the uh, lifters follow the camshaft much better. So uh, now that the, the engine has been solidified, the design, so to speak, um, Jabiru has taken the next step to convert from the machined billet construction that they've used since the beginning to a fully cast aluminum engine. Uh, the change is occurring as we speak in that uh, the four-cylinder engine that we have on display over in your tent is, uh, has, is fully cast. The cylinder barrels and the heads are cast aluminum. The barrels have a um, Nicosil type of coating on them. Um, the heads are now screwed onto the barrels, whereas before they were bolted to the barrels. Uh, and that eliminates all the need for retorquing the heads, which was one of the oh, okay. one of the last maintenance uh, procedures that Jabru wanted to try and get around. You mean the whole thing screws on? Yeah, similar to Lycoming Continental. Ah, okay. They're screwed together and uh, uh, don't try and take them apart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, guessing not. Yeah. Um, the internal workings of the engine uh, is virtually the same as it's been for the last five years. Uh, the roller cam followers, uh, the crankshaft is still, uh, it's forged in one piece, uh, machined and balanced in the machine. Uh, pistons are aluminum. Um, 
with uh, little pockets uh, uh, cast in them so that if a valve sticks the piston won't hit the valve uh, so there's uh, things have been really solid the last five years and now I'm quite impressed with the new design I, I think we're gonna have one heck of a good engine because the previous versions of the engine had a steel cylinder barrel and an aluminum piston we had to have a little more clearance between the piston and the cylinder the wall. The two metal types heat up yeah, differently. Yeah, the aluminum heated, expanded faster than the steel, so we had to have more clearance. Ah. Now, aluminum against aluminum, <coughs> excuse me, Jabiru has tightened up that clearance. And uh, so far, in 1,800 hours of flight time in testing... With uh, the fourth generation. With the fourth generation engines, they have yet to add any oil between their oil changes. Wow. So it's been uh, been good that way. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty significant difference. As the engine was evolving and all the updates and changes that Jabiru put in it, uh, it was very easy to do when it's on a CNC machine. You can change some lines of computer ah, okay. code running the machine and change the shape or add metal here or take more metal off there. So an engine under development, it's uh, just as economical to uh, to do on uh, a CNC machine, but once the design is set, uh, then for producing parts, the cast parts are much less expensive. Okay, all right. So now uh, all those parts are that way. Are they? Are they? Are they in production with these models, or yes, have we got some early um, examples here? The the four cylinder is fully in production with all cast parts. The mold for the six cylinder crankcase uh, won't be done until early May. Okay. So production on the six cylinders fully cast is going to start in the beginning of June. Now I should have one at Oshkosh that is uh, fully cast. And uh, so availability later in the year for the 3300. The 2200 yeah. is available now? Yes, 2200 is available now. The 3300s uh, will begin shipping in June and actually uh, I think there's a little pent up demand. <laughs> Uh, so the next available ones here would be in September. And how and long have you been doing this, Pete? How long has your name been associated with the brand Jabiru? This is my 18th year in the business. And of these uh, 7,000 engines that Jabiru has produced, I've sold 40% of them. <laughs> is that right? So, wow. um, you know, our company's pretty solid. Jabiru is absolutely solid uh, in Australia and... Um, uh, you know we're we're gearing up for these engines, and uh, I think uh, I think we're going to be busy as the summer and fall goes on. I would guess so. We manufacture a lot of firewall forward kits for a number of different experimentals. Uh, the nice thing about the fourth generation engine is it drops right into ah, the okay. same exterior same dimensions, mount, same mount yes. packages, and everything. Yes, so it drops right into these uh, firewall forward packages. We don't have to redesign anything. Okay, cool. Well, a lot of good information about the aircraft, about the engine. Um, where can people go to find out more? We've got the information up on our website, Jabiru North America, which is actually www.jabiruna.com. Okay. Uh, Jabiru Australia's website also has the information up. That's jabiru.net.au. Okay. Uh, so we've, uh, we'll try to keep as current as we can on it. And one more question before we uh, depart here. Somebody buys an engine, they fly it, they enjoy it, they get to the 2,000 hours, or it needs any other service in the meantime. How do, how do you handle that for them, Pete? Well, uh, my son Ben has a company called Sport Aircraft Services, and uh, Ben does all of the maintenance, repairs, upgrades on all Jabru products, engines and airframes. Oh, both, okay. Yeah, as well as uh, Rotax powered stuff. He's Rotax certified, so it's, uh, uh, we're a complete uh, service shop. Um, I get the front end of the hangar in the office and air conditioning and Ben, <laughs> ben and Ronnie sweat out back uh, fixing stuff. Well, they're young guys, they can yeah, handle that that's stuff. Right. So that's good, okay, so family operation. Most people yeah. love that. That's great. You can get what you need there, mm -hmm. jabiruna.com, and mm -hmm. there if they want to find the uh, 
uh, Australian web address. I'm sure you can direct them right. from there. There's a link on our website, sure. Great. Okay, Pete, thank you very much. A lot of stuff about Jabiru the airplanes over the years and some stuff about Jabiru the engines. One of the few companies in aviation that does both. You can find a lot of that and much more affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Pete Karate and myself here at Sun and Fun.